It's no secret. The rich history of Charleston, the culture, the living legacies, the significant places, they all flow together, resounding the heartbeat of Charleston. The Alfonso of Brown of Gullitors shows us how. Our father, what happened? All the way be thy holy and righteous name. Thy kingdom come, Lord, let the holy and righteous would be done. On this earth, as it does in your great heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Although assumed by some, the Gullah language is not considered to be poor or broken. A non-written language, it is the combination of the African and English words expressions. They take the word, honor. Honor is from the Igbo tribe in West Africa. Honor means you all. Instead of me asking where you all from, I could have said where honor from. Honor means you all. The hands that helped shape Charleston's history consist of some of the greatest pioneers that ever lived. Azikiwa Chandler of the Avery Research Center sheds light on such a pioneer, Denmark Vesey. So he is considered a hero by many. Why? Because he was about freedom, freedom for African Americans, um, in particular here in Charleston. And African Americans were living in bondage here in Charleston, and Denmark BC didn't think that was right. Denmark played a major role in the religious world of Charleston. It starts a church, white authorities shut the church down. He's cool, he lays school for a little while, starts another church, and ends up getting that shut down again. Despite VC's efforts being fought, today the African American Episcopalian Church is flourishing. One who has helped beautify the city of Charleston is the late Philip Simmons. Philip Simmons is an internationally known blacksmith. This is the same old 150 years old plus. The first scholar to make a serious study of the Gullah language was the late Dr. Lorenzo Turner, who published his findings in 1949. As a black American, Dr. Turner was able to win the confidence of the Gullah people. He identified more than 4,000 words and personal names of African origin. He then assigned them on an individual basis to specific African languages. With the Gullah language being such a part of Charleston's history, as well as a practice modern day language, approaching it appropriately is key. Gullah and Geechee were used sort of synonymously. I found where white used the term Gullah, black used the term Geechee more. Geechee was considered a derogatory term. You call somebody a Geechee, you better be ready to do battle. So what is Geechee? They said that Geechees were names of tribes living in West Africa. And they were known as the Ogeechee tribe. You go to Savannah, you see the Ogeechee River, the Ogeechee Boulevard. So now if you call me Geechee, I go, well, thank you. You know something about Manchester. But well, we still don't use the word loosely. Today, there is the Philip Simmons Foundation, a nonprofit organization that was formed to promote Simmons' work. The Low Country is flooded with the artistic influences of African Americans. And among those Americans is Jonathan Green. And he, you know, has done very well for himself um, and wanted to make a contribution to the Avery Research Center for African American History and Culture. And so what he did was donate all of these um, posters, and they are uh, a number of posters, but he didn't want them in the archives, he wanted them on the walls. So when you look at each one of these uh, posters, you'll see that there is a dedicated by. Um, and this one is dedicated by Ms. Wright. Um, so what that meant was she took the poster, made, had it framed, and then that way it's a community endeavor 